Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory, Glory to Lord. you, O Lord. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as God has sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe, for Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And Jesus said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by God. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So then Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? Only you have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise to Lord Christ. Christ. You can be seated. Please pray with me this morning as we consider these difficult words from Jesus. Holy One, speak truth to us today. Even if it is difficult for us to hear, help us know the truth of your love for us. Amen. Good morning, church. Oh, that went over so much better at this service. You guys have had a cup of coffee, I can tell. It is good to be with you this morning. I'm, I'm honored and privileged to share this time with you. It seems that we've been talking about bread for forever, right? Well, we made it. We've we reached week five of five on these passages on bread, specifically what are called the bread of life texts. So low-carb dieters and gluten-free intolerance take heart. We have done it. <laughs> Next week we'll get back to Mark, but this week we might... Might, we might get some of what are the more difficult words from Jesus in this whole exposition. Calvary, I need to tell you something, something that may be difficult to hear, so please just trust me when I say that it's for your benefit. Calvary, you're spoiled. I mean, you have it really, really good. I'm not kidding. Pastor Phil and Pastor Kyle have spoiled y'all with interns. (laughs) I mean, you just finished up a great 11 months with intern Drew, who's one of my classmates. We started seminary together, and he's a rock star. But I mean, seriously, did you guys meet Thaddeus? The cutest dog ever, am I right? (laughs) And you're getting another absolute rock star in Anna. Seriously, she's phenomenal. Y'all are going to learn a lot from each other, and I'm thrilled to see the ways in which you both grow over this next year. And all of this is not even to mention intern Amy and Ethan and Alex and Paul and on and on and on. Calvary's list of former interns reads like a who's who of pastors in the ELCA. I'm serious. And as much as that says something about those individuals, I think it says just as much about you, church. It tells me that you are called Calvary to raise up and train leaders for the church and that you take that call seriously and that you have affirmed and embraced that call and by God, you're good at it. You are such a blessing to the church, our church, the ELCA. It's funny 
how those things that are often difficult to hear at first can be turned into a blessing like that, isn't it? Sometimes the blessing that we hear doesn't come about that quickly, but I've often found that to be true of things that are, at least initially, difficult to hear, that eventually I come to understand them as something that are for my benefit. We call them hard truths, right? The things that maybe we don't want to hear, but are certainly the things that we need to hear. It's a little bit of what I hear in Jesus' words today, eat my flesh and drink my blood, eat me and you will live. See, we, I think we take for granted that we know that Jesus is talking about the Eucharist, but remember that the concept of Holy Communion would have been completely foreign to the disciples and those in first century Judea. It's likely that they would have thought that Jesus was talking about full-on Hannibal Lecter-style cannibalism, which is a little funny, but it also helps explain why they were a little put off by Jesus' words. This teaching is difficult, Jesus. Who could possibly understand this? But I think it's, it's difficult even for us because even though we understand Jesus to be talking about communion, there are promises made and gifts given in this meal that we have to trust. We have to trust that Jesus' body and blood are broken and given for us and that somehow that means something that has an effect on us and how we live in this world. We have to trust that this meal of bread and wine, as much as it is for us, is also food for the journey, nourishment that sends us out and carries us out into the world to be the hands and feet of Christ to a world that desperately needs it. And if we're honest with ourselves, I think we would prefer easy, wouldn't we? We would prefer if Jesus didn't say things like, eat and drink my body and blood. We would prefer if Jesus didn't ask challenging things like, does this offend you? Do you also want to go away? Because if we're being honest, I think we would say, well, yeah. Don't be discouraged, church, when the way of Jesus is a little tough going. When Jesus asked, do you also wish to go away? Remember that the disciples did leave. They did scatter when things got really tough. They denied and they fled and they hid behind locked doors. So know that you're not in bad company. It's in our nature. It's just who we are to want to leave or turn back when things get rocky. But also know that that rocky place, that mound of rocks outside the city walls, that hill of death, is also where salvation was realized. Know that even as the Savior of the world was put to death, death was defeated. Death does not get the last word. So although we may wish to go away at times, we serve a God who brings life from death and who breathes that life and encouragement into us, who makes resurrection from things that are dead. Sometimes following in the way of Jesus is difficult, not so easy. If it were easy, everyone would do it, right? Because following in the way of Jesus means sometimes having the unpopular opinion Following in the way of Jesus means fastening truth around our waist and holding faith in our hands, shouting down the evil in this world and proclaiming the gospel of peace. Following in the way of Jesus means picking up your cross and following. Following in the way of Jesus looks like eight-year-old Drew asking that his friends bring water for his homeless friends underneath Lancaster instead of gifts to his birthday party. It means being willing to be challenged, church, and absolutely, unequivocally responding to that call, and then some. 
There's no way that you could walk into the sanctuary from the doors over here and not see that mountain of water. And if that stack of water shows you anything, it should be that you are absolutely capable, that you can absolutely step up, that you are a blessing. As we bless backpacks this morning, know that the blessing of this church goes with you and sends you out into your schools to be a blessing to others. As we enter into this capital campaign, as we celebrate tradition and imagine the future, remember this. Calvary is a church that steps up. Calvary is a church that is open to being challenged, willing to hear some hard truths, and to respond in overwhelming ways. Who are the truth tellers in your life? Is it your spouse or your partner, your mom, your dad, your kids? Is it your siblings or friends, your pastor? I think we all need a little truth-telling in our lives, someone who cuts right through all the junk, all the stuff that we try and put up in the way to prevent people from seeing who we really are. I do that. We need someone that can get right to the heart of us, who knows us. Maybe you need a little truth-telling this morning. Maybe you need to hear something difficult. Well, here you go. Try this one out. You are loved more than you could possibly imagine. You are so loved. You are forgiven. You are beautiful. You are saved. You are an incredible child of God's own. And this table, these gifts, this body and blood, this bread of life and cup of salvation are for you and for you and you, and you, and for the whole church, and for all of God's creation. God's love and grace are here for you, so come, you who are broken, you who are unsure, you who need to be reminded, you who are desperate, you who are needy. Come and taste and see that you are loved beyond your wildest imagination, just exactly the way you are. Come, see, taste, and be moved. Be transformed. It's the easiest thing you'll do all day.